Howdy, it's Matt here and welcome to part four of this series. And in this part, we are going to be doing a flight test of iNav again. Now, if you've not seen this series yet, we are doing a comparison of the NAS A32 board with iNav and base flight aeroplane and comparing that to a Pixhawk. Oh, and by the way, we'll also be trying out the Pix Racer and also the CC3D board to find a flight stabilization system which has return to home features and also loiter features too. I will give you an early warning. Things do not go to plan and there are some swear words included in this video. I've done my best to beat them out, but once you see what happens, you'll understand why I swore quite a bit. Now, with that aside, I'd just like to stress that the settings, I didn't touch them since the day before when I flew it in the previous video. Also, the model was left exactly how it was on its journey from the flying field back home again. It got popped on my desk and then got taken back up again. And I went through this normal pattern of just making sure everything was connected, etc, etc. So as far as I'm concerned, this model did not change in any shape and form. The only thing which changed was the location which I flew this model. So let's go and find out what happened on the flying field with the NAS A32 and iNav. Right, this is iNav, flight number three with it now. Uh, it's there beeping away at me, but I know it's got a GPS lock, so we'll fly it anyway. I've stuck it into rate mode to begin with, and I'm gonna, just gonna fly around, make sure she's all right. Uh, then we'll try return to home, and then see what she does when she comes back. And then we'll also try loiter mode, bring her down then, and then take her off somewhere else and get her to loiter somewhere and see what she does. So this is iNav test number three. Engines armed. Engines ah. disarmed. Engines armed. Engines disarmed. Engines armed. Right. That went well. Telemetry lost. Squish battery. You see that? She just went right up in the sky. Well, uh, see what happened there then. heat in the battery we should be all right getting annoyed with this thing now it just wouldn't arm now i, I left it for five minutes and it armed arm. it's arming happy days let's give her a whirl so goodness knows what's going to happen here rate mode so i've got her in rate mode yeah let's go with rate mode does the motor work <laughs> Ah, bonus. Let's go. Bit anemic. Let's take her up high. Don't know where she was going then. Right. Return to launch. I just couldn't hit the switch fast enough. Stupid fucking bastard cunt. Right. Oh, look at the state of that battery. That's the second time that battery's been in. The board's come out and Obviously clipped a bit of the 
the wing. ESC is moved. Not a happy camper right now, stupid board. But let's be fair, it's probably a user setting. And it's probably my fault. But it stayed out long enough. Get, it would have a signal. It, there's the bit I'm looking for. That is really, really annoying compared to last time. And look, she's pulled one of the cables out there as well. Those are bounced out. That must have meant that wing bent right round. So then, gents, I'm back at my desk. And we have the iNav set up in front of us. I didn't change any settings from the day before. I didn't remove the board. I didn't plug it in. Uh, literally, as I left the flying site, uh, it went in the back of the car. Uh, came back, went on my desk, like I mentioned before, and it pops back in the car. And then you've seen me in the previous video go through all the checks uh, to just make sure it was plugged in and all the aileron elevons are working fine, etc, etc. The only thing, as far as I'm concerned, were, which changed from the day previous to that recording, uh, was the location. That's the only thing which changed. Now, after leaving her just to sit there for a couple of minutes, uh, it, we've got the GPS lock and the board would arm, and it armed before, to be fair as well, uh, when it went up in the sky. But this does highlight the very, ser very serious point here, which is that if you are ever testing anything like this, you need that model airplane as far away from you as possible. Uh, so in the previous video, you saw me doing all the checks, like right over there, well out of the way. Uh, and this time, maybe I was a little bit too close to my own liking and the model came down within uh, a 20 minute, 20 meter radius in the end because it really just, just dived down and aimed for Satan. So in short, I am not impressed with iNav. Uh, it looks like it's got great promise. Maybe it would work better on a better board, so maybe the F3 NAS A32. Uh, but to be frankly honest, that's me and iNav done. I will not be flying it in any of my models. Uh, and the reason for that is short. The only thing which changed here was the location. Everything else was exactly the same. Now, if I was in your position, and I'm, and I'm taking this from my position, uh, if I set up something like this and want a flight control board to give me stabilization, I want GPS return to launch, and I want loiter modes, uh, and any extra bonus features, I want 100% confidence that that board and the software which is on the board is going to perform flawlessly. Now, I do appreciate that there's going to be some setup required. So it doesn't matter what choice we go through, whether it's the Pixhawk or maybe the Pix Racer or the CC3D board, which you can see up on my screen on the right, uh, or Base Flight Airplane by Patrick E, is that what we're looking for here is reliability. So in my two tests, well, three tests, number one, we took it out the first time. There was no messaging in the iNav configurator that we needed to do uh, the extra steps for calibration. So that was a thumbs down on that side. Uh, and then, yeah, fair enough, with the buzzer being sat around at the back, that, that's a user experiencing. So I know not to do that. And you know, know not to do that in the future. But my point is, is that we've got to have 100% faith that the software and the board is going to is going to perform each and every time. So why would it work one day and not the next? I am not prepared to risk uh, any future models with that current combination. So in the next part, we are going to look at Patrick E's base flight aeroplane. I can give you a thumbs up already. Yeah, we had some issues in the flight to do with games. And to be honest, uh, with the, the rate settings and uh, the gains, that's always to be expected to a degree. Uh, and we didn't have any of these issues. So with that said, uh, the fifth part of this series is going to be out as fast as I can get the video edited for you. Uh, so don't forget, over on the YouTube channel, uh, there's a subscribe button on the right-hand side. Press the subscribe button, and then you'll be notified the second that that video is published. And with that note, I need to go and get part five edited up for you so that you can see the comparison between iNav 
which tried sending the NAS A32 and my Tech Sumo uh, all the way down to Lucifer, compared to the experience which we had not only with the NAS A32 and Patrick E's base flight aeroplane, but compared to the Pixhawk, which again, I'm going to give you a thumbs up already for that one. You kind of know where this is going now. Uh, we've gone down to the lowest point possible uh, during this part of this series. Well, I hope the very lowest part possible uh, in this series. And things from now on uh, are on the up. So did you find this video helpful? Uh, this is me risking my model. This is me spending my cash and time and effort uh, on they're trying to find the board which works right so I can use it so I don't lose another model or and, and I don't lose another uh, over uh, 147 pounds the last time I lost one uh, so I'm in the hunt for this uh, let me know what your thoughts are uh, any comments I'd thoroughly appreciate them and you can do that underneath this video in the comment section I really do look forward to hearing from you so with that said from myself Matt Cheerios!